Friends, today is Saturday, February 25, 2023, and uh, we have just uh, a couple of wonderful passages today. One from Acts. It's just one verse uh, that gets us into the story of um, the encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip, and one from Revelation uh, chapter 7, verse 9, which gives us a window into uh, the, the future kingdom of God. And so let's read these. Acts 8, 27. So uh, Philip got up and went. He had been instructed to meet the Ethiopian, to, to go on to a, a, a desert road, which is probably a deserted road also in this section. Um, they went down into Egypt and um, he just had a very successful evangelism in a populated area, people coming to faith. He's supposed to leave that behind and go into this lonely place and he encounters there, an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace. Now that sounds strange to us. Candace is a given name for us. Often uh, the nickname is Candy. The Ethiopians had a um, practice of calling the, the, the person who became their queen, the Candace. So it was like they all got this special first name. The queen of the Ethiopians. And this man was in charge of her entire treasury. He was like minister of finance for the country. Um, he had come to Jerusalem to worship. So he was someone who uh, was interested in Judaism, couldn't be baptized as a eunuch and actually become Jewish, but he wanted to be in Jerusalem. He wanted to see the, the, the worship of the people in Jerusalem. And then uh, our second passage is from Revelation 7, 9. After this, I looked, this is John speaking, and there was a great multitude no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. Um, one of the names I love best about Jesus is he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And that's true in a big cosmic sense in terms of the cosmic story, uh, the human story, that he is there at the start. All things were made by him, through him, and for him. And it's also true that he will be the final judge. He will usher in the final form of the kingdom. He will make all things new. And so he is there at the Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Um, but also, he's the beginning and end of other things. He is um, the beginning, he's there at the beginning of the this diversity that he called for. He called for the disciples to be open to uh, reaching to people from different nations. And Philip is really the first person who does this. He, um, he gets on this lonely road, he meets this Ethiopian. This would be a black person from, from Africa and uh, a different, you know, much higher social status than Philip because he's, he's ministry of the treasury. And they engage in a, a conversation and, and uh, turns out that the eunuch is reading from the book of Isaiah. And it's a, it's a passage that Jesus took to understand the work that he was going to do on the cross. And he explains it. This man is baptized. And according to several early church historians, and um, he, this man goes back and initiates the church in Africa. Which is fascinating. The beginning of the church in a whole other region is represented here. Jesus at the beginning of a new movement. Uh, but Revelation 7, 9 has Jesus in the center of the conclusion of that movement, um, which is all these nations and, and ethnic people who are gathered together in heaven, who are joined before the Lamb, uh, who are in celebration. And interesting, if we look what's happened between these two moments, one in the future and one in the past, what's gone on in the present? Well, we have moved toward that future in, in quite a significant way. Um, the African church is by population now the center of the Christian movement. It dates really back to that first century, to that moment. Um, and by the second century, we, we see that it, the church is evident, uh, we know this archeologically, in Tunisia and Sudan, um, in countries that are now countries like Ethiopia and Eritrea. And um, eventually in, in, in the story of, of North Africa, the Muslims came in and basically colonized that area and enforced the Muslim religion on the population, drove out many of the Christians. Um, but Christianity in Africa, still Sub-Saharan Africa, 
is uh, is it, it's, it's gigantic. It's it's sixty uh, percent of the people uh, below the Sahara are Christians, and that's a very populous part of the world and a growing part of the world. And so Africa has now become really the most populous part of the Christian movement, and it and it started here. We see the beginning of it with this Ethiopian Union, and and we see that. Even the great growth in Africa is just a stage on to the tremendous diversity that we will all know when we're gathered together in the kingdom of God. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we ask you to bless your church in the hard places where faith is outlawed or discouraged, like it is in many countries in North Africa. Inspire us with the courage of those who work and pray under threat. And we thank you for the great growth of the church in Africa and the way in which you've connected us in particular to the amazing work that you're doing in Malawi and a, a nation that is, uh, despite its suffering and its poverty, is, is tremendously Christian in, in faith and orientation and where um, you're doing miracles of development through the, through the gifts of this and other congregations with our ministry partners there. So we lift up all those wonderful Christians as well and the work that they do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.